Sure, but we're going to start off and, and give the whole full breakdown on Kelvin like we have on the other videos. But we're going to start off with the strengths, yes. you know, <laughs> because the negative usually gets amplified whenever it comes to Kelvin and Spurs fans. So, Ethan, I'm going to dish it to you on this one. Tell me just the things that you have uh, as Kelvin's strengths going into this season. Biggest strength? His intangibles. I know we were just joking about saying intangibles <laughs> prior to the show, but what he brings to the team as a leader, as a vocal leader, and with his play on the on the court, um, it's incredibly valuable, something you can't measure. He was and is the heart of the team, in my eyes. I don't care if, you know, Wemby might be, you know, the number one player, the franchise moving forward, but Keldon Johnson, kind of like how Draymond Green is for the Warriors, will be the motor for the San Antonio Spurs. He plays with such aggression, and this is also part of his strengths. His finishing around the rim, the way he yells, creates con contact, gets the fans involved in the game, um, that's, to me, his biggest strength. And, and from a basketball perspective, um, I think we can expect a higher efficiency as far as shooting the ball. I think he, especially with Wemby back, Devin back, um, uh, finishing at the rim, uh, creating for others kind of became one of his bigger strengths toward the end of last season because of just the nature of the team. He right. had the ball. The in attention his hand. he drew. He had to create for others as part, like as a necessity more than like a skill. But that became something that we can expect from him moving forward. Um, so yeah, I mean, love Kelton Johnson. Yeah, just just some other things that I had written down. Um, the first thing I wrote down was strength and matchups. And that was mm. really amplified last yes. year with his move to small forward in the two instead of having to play the four. Now he can actually use his strength, you know, driving to the rim, which is, I mean, that's been his favorite thing to do since he was a rookie, Kelvin. And he came in just doing that and people weren't expecting it. Hence the nickname, big body, everything. Yes. So now that he's actually playing the position he's supposed to be, his strength has turned into a strength, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Um, and because of his strength, he draws fouls a lot. Um, you know, he's able to get his shoulders into guys. Um, and, and I think him getting to the foul line last year, you know, and being, despite the shooting inconsistencies, which we'll get into a little bit later in the video, um, he was a consistent three point or free throw shooter this year. I forget exactly what the percentage is, but still, the point I'm trying to make on this is that him getting to the line this past season was a big reason why he was able to get up to 22 points a game. Um, I'm looking up that statistic. So, you know, last season, 74.9. So not perfect, definitely still some room for improvement, but the fact that he was a 75% three uh, free throw shooter, one, I think has to do with he was taking a little bit more, which is why the percentage is where it's at. Um, but two, still it shows the potential that he has moving forward. When I look back on this season, I mean, I, I can see that he's a 75% because of the increased volume in free throws. And also because I do remember a miss here and there, but really I remember him as a solid free throw shooter, which is <laughs> why I brought up this point is once again, getting to the foul throw, foul line has, has helped his scoring ability as well. The other things I had written down is kind of what you talked about. The, um, stuff that doesn't show up on the stat sheet. He's an energy plug. He was the unquestioned leader of the team last year, leading the huddles. You know, me and you have talked about, we feel like Devin Vassell has a little bit higher potential, but when it came to the leader of the team, who was leading the huddles, who was really taking charge in, in the fourth quarter most of the hurt. games, obviously in the 40 games Devin played, he had some fourth quarter moments as well. But throughout the majority of the season, that guy was Keldon Johnson. Um, and he turned into a 20 plus point per game guy, which is really what we wanted to see if he could be that last season I know the circumstances have a lot to do with it but he proved that he did have that ability which was something that we thought he had but you know weren't entirely sure of going into the season because we hadn't seen it before and the last thing I want to say about Keldon um that I think really goes underlooked whenever we talk about him, especially when it comes to the play style of this team moving forward, is that he excels in transition. Mm. Um, his body type, his speed for his body type, um, and and just you know his strengths offensively in his play style. You know, it's posters, it's using that shoulder with the momentum and force. You know, at the rim, um, and, and of course playmaking a little bit in transition as well with the attention he drew this past season. That's such a huge point. I cannot believe I forgot to say that. Transition game is Keldon Johnson's strength and honestly will be the biggest strength of the team next year as well. Yeah, you know, and I felt the same way, dude, when I was writing down my notes for this episode and then I was like, wait, I forgot about transition. Yeah, and it's almost so like that's kind of the reason why when you look at the modern of the NBA moving forward, um, it's not the only reason, but 
because he excels in in transition, you know, that's a big reason I think why the Spurs gave him the contract he did because they know that on top of all of his potential and every uh, and all his other skills that can continue to grow, his play style is fit for, you know, the the future of the of the league. Most definitely. And and this is sort of off topic but kind of on topic cuz we're talking about his transition skills and I was watching some old games last week and it was old school thunder like 2012 thunder and Russell Westbrook in transition and the aggression <laughs> that he takes his, himself to the rim reminds me a lot of Keldon Johnson and the way he screams after dunks too so many similarities there I know you said Keldon said that Russell was his favorite player growing yep. up so that is very evident if you go back and watch old school Russ I'm not talking about current Russ old school Russ exactly and that's and that's the guy that you know KJ was growing up on because he's yep. around our age yep. so you know he remembers that Westbrook you know the all-star Westbrook triple double Westbrook um you know not um no disrespect when I say this but now he is unfortunately referred to a lot as Westbrook so we mm-hmm. you know Kel- Keldon's referring to Westbrook it's a key mm-hmm. there correct uh, you know, I just want to pick your brain on the free, shri- free, free throw shooting thing. Kind of what are your thoughts on, on the percentage being where it's at? I need to go look at where it was before. I think it might have dropped, but I feel like there was an increase in free throws this year from him, correct? Yeah. I mean, holistically, yeah. 75% is still like a really right. solid spot to be in, especially for a small forward. Like, I'm not worried about him going to the line at all. In no way was he a, um, like, a, I wasn't nervous when he went to the line. If he missed both, it was surprising. For context, it stayed about the same. Um, I'm trying to figure out, but okay, but here, okay. I, I was exactly right. My thoughts, Ethan, you know, sometimes people want to talk about stats, and a lot of times on the show we talk about how we, we remember the tape and we put an emphasis on that. The reason I do that is is because of this, and the emphasis that I had in my brain, Ethan, even though I didn't know the exact stats, my, my suspicions were correct. He This was the highest amount of free throws he made throughout his career mm-hmm. at four, um, but it was also a jump. He had two more free throws than he had last season. Last year, he had 3.1. This year, he had 5.2. So staying at around the same amount and making, it was about two and a half before and, you know, getting about a three, a free throw and a half more per game. You know, you see what I'm saying? The yeah. point earlier, the percentage was really, even though it's a little bit lower, when you factor in the increase in shots, it was mm-hmm. basically the same. So love yeah. to see that from Keldon, especially this season. 